Backpacking Yosemite was a dream we were super excited to make real. After getting into the valley, we got our permits, found a backpacker's campsite, and explored a bit. 2017 saw record attendance for national parks, and 2018 will probably be the same. So if you plan to visit, especially in the summer, expect lots of cars and a tough time parking. Even with the crowds though, the surroundings are still amazing. After checking out some John Muir commemoration and taking a short hike to the falls, we settled in for the night and we were ready for the backcountry. Our first day would start at the Mono Meadow Trailhead, south of the valley. From there, we'd make our way down to the Illuit Creek, where we'd have some off-trail adventures. Once back on the trail, it was off to Illuit Falls. After the falls, we'd hike out from the valley and find a place to camp and settle in for the night. All right, here we are. <laughs> In the Yosemite wilderness, the High Sierra, there's Pete. <laughs> we uh, hiked, <laughs> we hiked off trail um, maybe a mile or two ago, and hiked down to this. I think it's the Illuluet Creek. Probably saying that wrong. Um, and we're gonna cross it, so we're just. We're taking our socks off, We're gonna put our trail runners back on, see how this goes. All right, I'm going in. Woo. Nice and cool. Oh, there we go. Some rapids upstream there, that's why we hike down further. The first leg of the trip was hot and arid. The ground was dusty and the vegetation was tough. We went through plenty of water and sunscreen here. Also, already on day one of backpacking Yosemite, we understood the importance of having a reliable GPS with topographic maps in addition to a standard mapping compass. Using these tools, we found our way back to the trail after being a little lost for a while. That led us to another creek crossing. The water was crystal clear and refreshingly cold. All right, well, we're still off the trail here, um, but we're kind of following the creek, the river, or whatever it is. <laughs> and uh, looks like we may have found a bit of a side trail that's just sort of created by, uh, you know, either other hikers or maybe it's a deer trail or something like that. Anyways, uh, following this back along this water, then we should pretty soon here, maybe a mile or so, uh, collide back with the trail. We're thinking we're maybe going to take that up to... Uh, possibly Illuluit Falls and then backtrack a little bit because it's kind of a region where you're not supposed to uh, camp right up there by the falls so we're gonna go up there we're gonna backtrack and then just kind of find wherever we want to set up some camp
Alright, here we are on day two in the morning. Didn't take any video last night because we were just focused on finding where to camp. The trail was a little tougher than we expected. <clears throat> but not a bad view. Kind of hard to see there, but day two would start with hiking up to Panorama Point. From there, we'd trek down to Nevada Falls. At the falls, we'd rest up to prepare for miles of ascent up to Clouds Rest in what would prove to be the most challenging leg of our journey. After enjoying the views from the summit, we'd travel down this other side of the mountain and find somewhere to set up camp near a creek bed. Hiking up to Panorama Point was an awesome way to start the day. The trail was smooth and the views got bigger as we climbed. It was amazing. Yeah. We were just up at Panorama Point and now we're descending. There's a whole bunch of switchbacks going up there. Uh, climbs, I don't know, 600, maybe more feet. Um, but pretty steep climb. Spectacular views. Now we're heading to Bad Falls. Here we are in the Bad Falls. We're on our way up to Clouds Rest here. Um, pretty arduous hike so far. A ton of elevation gain here. Um, but uh, we've got maybe a little under 2,000 vertical feet to go. Um, so we're getting there. But we're just going to push through. It's like 215. So our plan is to get to the top of that and rest there and enjoy the view and then just hike down the other side a little bit um, and camp somewhere in there. We're going something like up there. I think higher than that. We're on the final push get to the top of this summit. Done some tough hikes, but uh, yeah, this one was a challenge. Um, we just got back onto the trail. There was a point where it was really unclear where the trail was and we lost it, but you know, thankfully we have a GPS 
and I've got the topographic map on it. Whew, that's where we're going. Cloud's Rest was a high point, both literally and figuratively. All of the challenges we faced getting there were worth it. There really were no words for this view. We took off our packs and stared in silence, feeling gratitude for the national parks. Basically just zillion feet drop on either side so just have to be really careful on this last part yeah we we hiked uh past the valley to the other side we started at the falls um and basically our plan uh for today was to uh there's like a no camping zone um that surrounds the valley and it's on the map and our plan was to basically hike far enough to get outside of that zone again because we were hiking right into it and then we wanted to pop out the other side um, and then when we got there kind of decide what are we going to do um, and uh, so we did that and that was a pretty that was a pretty legit hike um, and then we got to the decision point of do we want to kind of camp around there or do we want to press all the way on uh, summit clouds rest um, and then hike down the other side of clouds rest the north face of it and uh, camp somewhere down there and we knew if we did that we would have to hike a certain distance to get to this creek crossing um, because you know we needed water um, anyways long story short that's what we did it's getting pretty cold here we're at just under 9,000 feet. Um, there is, I'll show you, uh, there is plenty of snow around here. Um, it's maybe, yeah, it's about 10 after 8. So um, we're preparing for it to get down to, you know, freezing or maybe even below freezing. We'll see. Um, be surprised if it really gets that cold, but we're up pretty high and we're on the north face. So who knows? So hence we've got our tarps up. Uh, you've noticed I'm wearing this really embarrassing looking bug net, uh, so is Pete. It's pretty natty around here, unfortunately. That's, that's really the only downside I would say of this, of, of where we decided to camp here. Anyways, we're cooking up dinner. Pete's kind of washing up down by the creek a little bit. We are, we are filthy, man. I mean, let me just kind of show you. I don't know if you can kind of see. Yeah. That, that that's today that's what it was like today um, my hands are pretty nasty uh, yeah 
were gross, you wouldn't want to be here right now. So I'm going to go wash up after Pete, kind of wipe down with some wet ones and everything, uh, and then we'll see. The first milestone of day three was hiking to Sunrise Lakes. After enjoying some time by the water, we hiked on through a dramatic meadow and linked up with a section of the John Muir Trail. After looping back south, we then followed a river several miles down to Echo Valley. There, we set up camp on an open mountainside with awesome views and a vibrant night sky. got up to uh, Sunrise Lakes. There's three of them up here, Alpine Lakes, and uh, there's just this creek or cascading water just flowing right over these, this granite. It looks super awesome. And I think it's maybe coming from snow melt and the bigger lake flowing into the one of these smaller ones which I don't know if you can see on this but way down there is one of the three lakes so I'm gonna hike down a little further maybe and see how it looks there This was our favorite area that we camped in. The terrain was rugged and beautiful. It felt incredibly secluded, and it was open to a clear sky full of the Milky Way. After the invigorating challenge of day two, day three was about appreciating the wilderness and enjoying the scenery. Day four would be long and challenging, the hike ahead of us was exciting, but the lure of a hot shower and cooked meal persuaded us to scrap the planned fifth day and to instead complete the remainder of our trip in one. The video camera ran out of battery, we were tired and filthy, but we pushed on to finish what had become one of our favorite journeys. From Echo Valley, we hiked down the Merced River. We then passed through Lost Valley, where a burned forest gave way to new growth. 
After passing by Nevada Falls again, we were on the home stretch. In the end, Yosemite was more incredible than we ever could have imagined. 95% of Yosemite is designated wilderness, and our experience was just one portion of it. Whether you're a seasoned backpacker or contemplating your first hike, get some gear together, carve out a few days, and go experience this national treasure. We promise you'll leave with much more than you hoped for.